Lesson 1.10, the other lesson that is on the 1.11 quiz. Here we are going to talk about absolute zero, and we're going to get into what this whole Kelvin idea is. So, just a quick review that we've already talked about. We defined temperature earlier. It's a measure of the movement of molecules in the substance, or you can even say it's a measure of kinetic energy. All right, because temperature is directly related to kinetic energy, which is directly related to how much the molecules are moving. So what happens to kinetic energy when temperature increases? So T goes up, kinetic energy goes up. All right, they are directly related. What one does, the other does. So there's a person who is called Lord Kelvin. He theorized that at a certain incredibly low temperature, there would be molecules that have no kinetic energy and they stop moving. All right, so he defined this temperature as absolute zero. So if you hear that, it's like the absolute zero temperature. All right, so what that means on Kelvin's temperature scale, zero is the bottom. There are no negative values in, in on the Kelvin scale. All right. So, this is a theoretical value, but scientists have managed to come within a billionth or less than one Kelvin away from actually getting molecules to stop moving. Haven't done it yet, but they've gotten close. So, again, absolute zero is the theoretical temperature at which all motion stops, even at the atomic, subatomic level. All right. So it's a, it's a new scale that has no negative numbers, so it starts at zero, and we have set zero, e zero Kelvin equals a negative 273 degrees Celsius. So if you think about zero degrees Celsius being freezing point, negative 273 is pretty darn cold. You wouldn't be able to survive at negative 273. Now this down here is very handy. This is how you convert. All right. So if you have a Celsius temperature and you need to calculate what it is in Kelvin, you're going to add 273 to it. If you have a Kelvin temperature and you want to figure out Celsius from it, then you subtract 273. All right. So definitely write this down. Remember to use this because, again, some more math. So, let's do this. We have 273 Kelvin, and we need to go to degrees Celsius. All right, so you go from, let me switch to something we can actually read here. Remember, Kelvin to Celsius, you subtract 273. Celsius to Kelvin, you add 273. All right, there's also, if you ever end up with a negative number, you did it backwards. <laughs> Which I think I just did it backwards. Uh, Nope, I didn't. Sorry. So, first one, we're going from Kelvin to Celsius, so we're going to subtract 273. So 273 minus 273 is going to be zero. Um, 25 degrees Celsius to Kelvin. We're going to add 273, so that's going to be... 298, I think. Yeah. 298 Kelvin. Sorry, and this one was degrees Celsius. 456 Kelvin, 2 degrees Celsius. Subtract 273. 456 minus 273 is equal to 183 degrees Celsius. 
And then Celsius to Kelvin, you add 273. And that'll be 310 Kelvin. Alright, so not difficult ones, but you do got to remember when you add and when you subtract. Alright, so this is where, this is the kind of problem that would probably show up in, on your test. Something where you get temperatures in Celsius, but you have to remember that all those equations that we've been talking about, they only work if you plug in Kelvins. So, let's identify what we know. We've got 200 liters, two atmospheres. All right, looking at these things, you have gas in a fixed 200 liter container. So that means our volume's not gonna change. So we actually don't gotta worry about this number. But we do have a T1 and a P1 and a T2 and a what happens to pressure so P2 is our question mark. I know I'm gonna need more space. Alright. So first two done. The equation that's going to help, so we've got changing pressures and temperatures, so that's going to be gay Lussac. so we're going to use P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. I'm going to plug in what we know, so I know pressure is 2, my temperature is 0 degrees Celsius, but I need to convert that to Kelvin. So I'm going to do 0 plus 273 which is 273 Kelvin, and I'll plug that in here. And then on the other side, we're solving for P2, and I have my temperature 50 degrees Celsius, but I need that to be Kelvin. So I think that's 2323. All right, so let me simplify a little bit. This is 0 0.0073 is equal to P2 over 323. We'll multiply both sides by 323. And I will get 2.0073. Atmospheres. All right. So this is probably the most complicated the problems get. Some of them, many of them, will give you the temperatures directly in Kelvin. But if they don't, just remember you do need to convert those to Kelvin.